Just wanted to bring you back for a quick closeout on the orange peel candy that I was making in the previous video. Um, this is the finished product. I know I showed it to you on another plate, but I wanted to touch base with you and add in there that it t does take the a while to um, dry out. I know the recipe that I posted says four to five hours or something like that. These have been sitting here drying since the day I did this was uh, the day before yesterday. So we're on the second day of drying and they're doing pretty good. Uh, there's just a couple of places that are still a little wet. So I'm going to leave them a little bit longer. As far as the oranges go, um, I've had them on the dehydrator and they're just about done. This one needs a little bit longer. And then when, when they are done, then I could just be dumping them in this bowl. And they're quite crunchy, as you can hear. Um, as soon as the other ones, I finish those up, then I'll put these in my food processor and grind them down to a powder. And uh, then I'll stick them in one of my fruit jars, my canning jars, and screw a lid and a ring down on it. And then I have an attachment for my food processor that sucks all the air out. So I will do that, and then I can put it on my shelf and use it in my tea on my cinnamon rolls, um, any kind of meat that I want to marinate. And yes, I am still going to do that, that pork, orange pork. Um, probably I'll do in the barbecue and also in a crock pot with maybe some of those, um, oh, there's some kind of a pepper. I can't think of the name. They come in a jar and they're green. They're really good. They put them on salads. I can't think of the name. Anyway, so that's the catch-up for that. Um, I'm also getting ready to do some canning today, some pressure canning, and I'm going to be doing um, wild game. I have some, I believe, maybe some moose and some elk that I'm doing. So let me show you. So what I'm doing is I've got my setup here where I'll be cutting them up into small pieces. This will be a raw pack um, canning procedure. So I've got my cutting board all clean and sterilized and after I get the meats cut up into chunks, then I'll move them over to this and I'll, um, I'll spice them up. Um, not much spices I don't, and I don't use a lot of salt. I just, I don't, I don't usually use that. But I've got some garlic, some Grillmates Montreal sea steak seasoning, a little bit of salt, um, and I'll mix that all together while it's on that tray. I'll stuff the meat in um, jars, which are in the dishwasher, being sanitized, washed and sanitized. And then um, when the jars are done and I get them packed, then I will have this. This is my pressure cooker. Yeah, it's huge. Um, and I love it. I love this thing. It's a Presto. It's great. Anyway, as soon as I get the jars packed, I will already have this water in here boiling. Um, and then again, when I do my pressure cooker or my water bath cooker, I always dump about two tablespoons of the vinegar in it. It keeps the jars from getting that white film on them. Just, I mean, I wash the jars after they're canned anyway, but still. So, yeah, I just put the amount of water in there that's required gonna get noisy hold on um, and then make sure you have this little rack in your pressure cooker or in your water bath canner because it keeps the jars from banging around on the bottom and having a possible break so that's what's in the works for today and as soon as the jars are done I will bring you back in and show you the whole process of it. So stick around. And in the previous video I told you I was going to be doing um, some canning of some meat, um, some game. Um, I also found a couple of steaks that I just need to get them canned. I'll probably use them for stew, tacos, um, I don't know, anything you can put chopped up meat in. So I thought I'd get started while the jars are finishing up and I'll put you down so you can see what I'm doing and so while the jars are finishing up in the dishwasher 
I'm going to get to cutting up this meat and getting it spiced. So when the jars are done, I can just put them in and get to canning. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to cut these up in um, squares, um, mostly for stews and soups, kind of, you know, decent one-inch type chunks. Um, I also thought about, and I don't know how it's work, going to work, but I'm going to try it, um, sticking a couple of these good sized ones in a jar hole. I'll spice them up and stick them in the jar hole, but raw. And I will pressure cook them that way. And then what I want to do is try to um, barbecue them. I mean, I know that putting them in the pressure cooker is going to um, cook them. But I want to try my hand at maybe canning them and then barbecuing them just to get the barbecue flavor on them and see how that comes out. I'll just do a couple of them that way just to see. Okay, so I'm going to keep cutting and I'll bring you back in when I'm stuffing the jars. I went ahead and did them in bigger chunks as you can see because um, in the process of canning them, pressure cooking them, the meat will shrink up and I wanted to have bigger chunks. I saved out for um, to try my hand at, at barbecuing after they've been canned, pressure cooked. Um, I pulled out seven of these steaks to try that with. And then over here, I'm just starting out with the round steak. And I'm not sure if this is elk, venison, bull moose, I, I don't know. Um, these were sent to me by my cousin who lives in Wyoming. And then the next thing I'm going to do is work on these uh, loins, or no, it's a bull elk. But I'm also going to do the same with those, cutting them up. Um, and I think what I'll do with this batch that I'm cutting up now is I will cut them up in strips to make is it? Carne asada, so I can have tacos, uh, maybe some beans, make chili beans out of them. So that's what's going on. Okay, I will check back with you when I get these okay, cut up. I'm going to start slicing. This is the, I don't know if you can see it. There you go. The tomato bouillon chicken flavor. This uh, is Mexican spice. Not much because it is really salty. And then I will add a ton of garlic to it. And then um, after after they're processed and um, I start using them, then I'll add other spices like um, cilantro, cumin type of stuff to it at that point. Let me grab a spoon. and then I'll mix it up and I'll do it again. As far as I'm concerned, you can never have too much garlic. And I'll do these same spices on these steaks. And again, the steaks are just um, pretty much an experiment because I don't know how they're going to barbecue up after they've been um, pressure canned, but I'm going to give it a try. Okay. Ugh. I hate getting my hands in this, but let me get a plate. Let me get these steaks out of the way. Let me get the pig spice them up while I'm waiting. So these steaks I'm just going to spice up just like I would if I was just going to barbecue them. Top, bottom, left, right. 
And like I said, this is an experiment, so we'll see. I don't know how they're going to taste, but I think we'll give it a try, right? Oh, this is... Um, this way, um, you know, if my power goes out, then I don't have to worry about my meat in the freezer because it's all going to be canned and have a stable shelf life and I can just keep them on the shelf in the pantry for three, four, however many years. There's a room over there for that. Okay. Then I don't have to worry. My power goes out. Say I'm gone on a trip somewhere and I come back and it's like, oh no, my electricity went out. And then I've got a whole freezer full of a lot of food, a lot of meat that's gone bad because it hasn't been kept cold. So I don't mind it. And I've done um, chicken like this. Um, I've done cream cheese, chicken. What else have I got over there? Corned beef. Um, I know one time my mom made me some soup because I was sick. Mom's chicken soup, chicken noodle soup. And I didn't eat it all. So I hustled out here and I just canned it. So I've still got some of some of mom's chicken noodle soup in my canning pantry. Okay, that should be good. Let me wash my hands and I'll start grabbing jars. So I'll start um, pulling my jars out and show you how I cold pack, raw pack, ooh, hot, my jars for canning. Now these bigger pieces, I like to put in the wide mouth jars. Ooh, hot. Um, only because it's easier to get them in and out. So you just drop them in, and you're going to push them down as tight as you can, can, can get them, because you want to get rid of as much air in those jars as you can. Um, and get it a quarter of an inch from the top. I got an air bubble down there. So what I'll do is I'll just grab a knife. A clean knife out of the dishwasher. Ouch, and it's hot. And just work those bubbles out. That's pretty much all there is to it. Again, as much air as you can get out, the better. bubbles just come right up. That's what you want. Just going to wipe the edges down. Get all that food debris off there that you can. Reason being, when you put your lid and your ring on, you want this to be a super, super clean, debris-free area because the rubber seal on the lid, and I'll get one and I'll show you so you have a better idea. Uh, the ring on the lid has a rubber edge on it and it's that edge that makes a seal which makes your food shelf stable. So let me grab that lid and I'll show you. Okay, so here's the lid. You see that red circle area? So that's a rubber kind of a seal and that sits down on top like that. that. And I've had these in warm water, not boiling, but warm, to soften up that seal. It makes it speak better. And then you take your rings. Sorry about the noise. Screw them down, give them a nice twist, and that's it. Let me get the others filled up exactly like I did these, and then I'll bring you back when I'm putting them in the pressure cooker. Okay, so I got all the jars filled up, and in the process I realized I didn't have enough of this, side, this size of a lid, 
Um, so I used my Tattler. Now these are reusable. They're called Tattler lids. I don't know if you can see the label, but trust me, it says Tattler on it. They're reusable. It has a lid, and then it has like a plastic O-ring or a rubber ring, and then you just screw them on with these. It does the same thing. I thought I bought a whole two or three boxes of these, but I must have used them when I made pomegranate jelly. So anyway, I'm going to get these in the pressure cooker. I don't know if you can hear it. But yes, it's boiling. Okay, so let me get these in there. Okay, so I started putting the jars in the water. And uh, as you can tell, I ran out of room, but I still have more jars. So I have another one of these racks. And I'm just going to put it right on top. And I'm going to keep... I'm going to just put that right on top, and then I'm going to keep putting jars in. Right on top. They're double stacked. That's uh, the good thing about having a pressure canner that's nice and big. You can double stack them. Okay. So, okay. See the arrow right there that's etched in? It has to line up with this arrow when you initially, you know, hook it back up, put it together. And then you just close it to give it a spin. Can't do it with one hand. Hang on. Okay, so before we go much further, I wanted to tell you, when you're using a pressure cooker, I know a lot of people are scared of them, and rightfully so. There's a, a see my hand, is that black mark? That's because there's a big ring that goes all the way around the edge of the inside of the lid. I always put Vaseline on it to keep it Soft. You don't want it, you you don't get want it to get cracked, then your pressure canner won't work. This is your vent hole, and you want to you want to clean that. You want to look through it before you start canning. Make sure you can see light through it um, so that it, it vents. When the pressure cooker comes up to pressure, this will pop up, this will pop up, and then you'll know that you're, you're gaining pressure in there. Um, so let me back up. You don't have to be afraid of these if you follow your manufacturer's directions. Seriously, you don't. Um, this thing is, is a jiggler. If you can see that. Yeah, it's a jiggler. And I have it set for 10 pounds pressure. So you, you can adjust it for your altitude. Always check your book, your pressure cooker book, to see what pressure you need your pressure cooker to get to for the altitude you live in. So once this will come back to a boil and then steam will come out of here, you want to let it vent for 10 minutes, a solid 10 minutes. And then when it starts, when the 10 minutes is up, you're going to carefully drop your jiggler on and your pressure, you'll see, will start to come up, 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 up. So when mine gets to about 10, this jiggler will do exactly that. It'll jiggle. So when it gets to that point or close to it, I will come back and let you know. Don't need this on there though until it has vented for 10 solid minutes. Okay, I will be back in a little bit. Okay, there is what you want to see steam-wise when you set your 10 minute timer. Carefully just drop it on top. That popped right up. I don't know if you saw it or not. I may not have had the camera on it. And then this will, when the pressure in the pot gets up to 10 pounds, this will start jiggling and keep it at 10 pounds. If I notice it has trouble doing that, it goes 
you know, this is the 10 pound mark. I don't know if you can see that. Yeah, this is the 10, 10 pound mark right here. So this dial will come up to the 10 pounds. If, if my heat is too high, then it'll go a little bit over the 10 pounds, which isn't too bad. But if it gets too high, then I will just adjust my flame so that it's not quite so high. Right now I've got it on high because I want it to get up to pressure so I can get this timer going. I remember, kind of a funny story, um, when my husband first bought me this pressure cooker um, Christmas a couple years back. Oh, I was thrilled. Um, I don't even remember what the first thing was I canned, but I stuck it in the pressure cooker and I set it and I remember standing way back over there because I didn't want that thing to explode on me. Um, but I've never had that problem and I've I'd seen a picture on the internet of somebody's kitchen where supposedly the pressure cooker had exploded and it went up into the oh the vent thing that goes across there that you know what I'm talking about has a light and a vent anyway um it had gone up into that and was stuck or maybe it was stuck in the ceiling I don't remember and it was a mess the only thing was it wasn't a mess with food splattered everywhere, which you would think if it exploded it would have done that. But that picture always stuck in my head. So, I, yeah, I stood way back over here. <laughs> Let me go back here. I mean, my kitchen's pretty big. I was way, way back here. You know, I was just a little worried that that thing was going to explode. But it never has. My grandmother had one. And, uh, she did a lot of canning. Anyway, that was funny. Anyway, so I'm going to set my timer for 75 minutes now, and then I'll come back and tell you what I'm going to do next. Okay, I just came back and checked my jiggler, and it is doing exactly what it's supposed to be, doing its little dance. So I'll go set my timer for 75 minutes now. I'll keep coming back and checking this to see how it's doing. And again, if the pressure gets too high, which it shouldn't, um, I'll drop my heat a little bit. But my jiggler's doing its little happy dance. Okay, so my timer just went off. And I'm going to turn off the heat. And then I'm just going to let it sit until the jiggler stops jiggling. thing here has dropped and that thing there has dropped and the pressure I don't know if you can see it is down to zero <clears throat> so I'm going to take this off okay and I'm going to take this top off the lid off but I'm going to use pot holders so I'm going to set you down again be very careful when opening this because this steam will definitely burn you going to tip it this way first, let it kind of drip out, and then take it away from me so it doesn't burn me. Okay, so, I don't know if you can see in there, but it's bubbling. The jars are bubbling. See the bubbles? That's the only one you can see really good. So I'm going to let it sit like this for about 5 to 10 minutes, let the inside kind of come a little closer to room temperature, um, mainly because it's nice and warm in there, those jars are hot, and if I bring them out into the house area, because it's cold in my house, I don't usually run the heat, um, those jars will crack. So I'll grab a thick bath towel and put it down on this counter because it's really cold too. Just don't want those jars to crack so to keep that from happening I'll put a towel down but I'll give those about five or ten minutes. I don't know if you can hear them. They're hissing at me. 
<laughs> I must have made him mad. Anyway, let me grab the towel and I'll be right back. Pop, pop. That's what you want to hear. Put them right here. That way you don't put them right down on the... You know, those are hot. Maybe I'll add another one. Yeah, let me go grab another towel. So to take them out of um, the drawer, out of the canner, you want to use these jar grippers so that uh, you don't burn your hands. So here we go. Number one, taking them out um, carefully not to tip them because you don't want the juice from the meat or anything that you're canning to get up underneath that sealed lid. You want that lid to be able to suck down, cool off, and it'll suck down nice and tight and form a, form a seal. I pick it up and dump it down there but there is the finished product you can see it's still bubbling yeah oh pop pop that one's really bubbling yeah anyway let's look at that one go yeah, these babies are hot. My pressure cooker. Pop, pop. Anyway, yeah, that uh, popping sound is exactly what makes a person who cans very, very happy. That's pineapple. That's peach jelly. Those are pickled peppers. These are pickled tomatoes. Pomegranate um, jelly. These are green tomatoes that I've canned, um, just basically in water, so that I can have fried green tomatoes in the winter time. Yummy! Those, um, that's my spaghetti sauce. I don't know how good you can see. It's kind of dark in here. Yeah, that's my spaghetti sauce. This is green tomato salsa, apricot and jalapeno jelly. You put that over cream cheese. And uh, there's my cream cheese. <laughs> yep, I can cream cheese. This, this is what I call cowboy candy. Let me put it over here where you can see it. That is candied jalapeno peppers. I get so many compliments on that. Um, basically, you can put the peppers on a sandwich if you want. And then the juice that's in the can, I use that. Uh, to marinate meat in before I barbecue it, and it is delicious. That's my uh, chicken stock down there. When I get um, when I have a chicken, I boil the bones and the neck and some vegetables, onions. I boil that all up and make my own chicken stock. Those are my my carrots. Most of those were out of my garden, and then that's I was telling you about my mom's uh, chicken soup. That's mama's chicken soup. Yum. What else do I got in here? Oh, the corned beef. That's corned beef right there. And I made my own pork and beans. And these are beans and ham. These have the brown sugar in them, which makes them uh, the pork and beans. Anyway, and then, I don't know how long this, I don't know how long this video is going to be, but I'll show you around a little bit more. Back here in my pantry, I have, um, I'm not sure if you can see or not, but there's more jelly up there. There's canned apricots way in the back, back there. That's um, beets. That right there is chili beans that I made. That's corn from corn that I grew. And then there's more jelly and salsa back there. And that great big jar, way in the corner, that one right there. That is actually 
because um, last summer I ended up with aphids on my on my uh, roses, and instead of spraying Raid or something on them, I made my own concoction, and it was. Um, let me think what I used. I picked a bunch of mint leaves and put it in a pot and a whole bunch of garlic. I don't remember exactly the measurement, then some water. And I boiled all that together and then I put some cayenne pepper in it and boiled that, just let it cook, cook, cook. And uh, my husband, before he passed away, he was, he was going crazy. He thought I was cooking lamb in here because of the garlic and the mint. But no, it was for the aphids on my roses, so I canned a bunch of it because um, it worked really well. Got rid of the aphids quick, and they stayed away too. I think probably garlic, the had garlic had with that. With... But anyway, okay. Well, I'm gonna end this video. Please uh, don't forget to click on like, subscribe, share, and the thumbs up. And I'm gonna get this video loaded on the computer. So that you can watch it. All right. Thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. Have a good night.